Hey everyone, 8 Bishop here. Uh, today we're going to be doing an overview of what I perceive to be the best cards in Marble Snap. Uh, I'll give a really brief overview of why I think they're really powerful. Uh, just a quick explanation of um, what are going to be my standards for this. Um, with a few exceptions, if a card is a build around card, uh, it will be marked down because it is build around. Uh, it will be a lower value thing because your deck has to function a specific way to make the card operate. Um, if a card kind of fits in anywhere and is universally powerful, it will be ranked higher. Uh, like I said, there are a couple exceptions in that list, but for the most part, uh, even if the card seems super powerful and uh, you have a ton of trouble beating it or your opponents have a ton of trouble beating it, if it's very niche because it's powerful for one specific archetype, uh, I will mark it a little bit lower unless it's just very 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 high power level all right so let's get started uh, i'm not gonna rank the zero costs there are two of them um i haven't played with either of them um i think that they both have potential for play because aggro is a thing and zero cost is a great way of going about that um as well as like the discard package being able to select their stuff so i think they have a place um i think that they potentially can be very powerful but i'm not going to rank them um I think Hood can function really well in a discard deck, but I haven't been able to try it out, so I'm not going to uh, rank that one yet, and even if I were, because it needs the discard synergy to really shine, uh, it already comes down a little bit anyway. Um, so we're going to touch on the one cost I actually believe to be uh, universally powerful. Um, so Ant-Man is a universally powerful uh, one cost. You can play this in a deck that doesn't play a lot of pre uh, units just as a uh, round you out, give myself an extra four power surprise play uh, in a spot. Um, aggro decks will very reliably get him to four power pretty regularly. Uh, so you can play him as a surprise. You can play him as a thing that your opponent wants to answer really early. Uh, a really common thing I'm starting to see is people will play him and then play armor to protect him from electric plays uh, yeah very strong unit um electra is one of the stronger one drops in the game because she can stop the other strong one drops uh, she can counter play one of the best one drops in the game if it's uh, misplayed as well as can counter play um a lot of just the other universally good cards um hawkeye's fine but it isn't like top of the line um you know, like, B-tier kind of thing. Squirrel Girl fits specific archetypes, but isn't insane. Sunspot's another case of it fits specific archetypes, but uh, I wouldn't play it, like, in an aggro deck very often. Uh, Agent 13 is great for card advantage, but random cards aren't always the best things in the world. There's literally a card called Aga Agatha Harkness that plays the game for you, and it is not an intelligent bot. Every time I've ever hit Agatha Harkness, I have lost the game. Uh, the very existence of that card makes anything that gives you a random card slightly worse uh card advantage or no um angel strong but needs a specific archetype uh, this is a very strong effect but needs a specific archetype uh iceman is another universally powerful one drop uh this game is very tempo oriented orientated there are only six rounds in the game sometimes seven um there are plenty of times where you can completely shut someone out from a combo with this card um if they want to do like a Nova combo um, on turn four, for example, um, using, um, I'm blanking his name, but the three drop that destroys it, and you hit either the Nova or the three drop, you've just made them have to wait till turn five for the combo. Um, and a lot of time, that's extra time they didn't have to give because they need to set up locations. Um, most notably, though, if you're playing against a deck with like big cost win conditions, uh, as long as you don't hit a six drop with this because it can't ex make them exceed the six cost, uh, you can functionally just ruin decks. Uh, the Odin deck uh, out there really wants to play White Tiger on five and Odin on six more games than it doesn't. And if you hit White Tiger with Iceman, you have just ruined um, 14 points of their stat lines that they depend on for winning the game. Um, but just tempo in general is so important in a card game. You go into the fact that this card game has a specific number of turns, and I think Iceman is arguably the strongest one-drop in the game that isn't Nova. Uh, and mind you, I'm stipulating that isn't Nova because Nova is just game-warping, and um, 
Iceman doesn't warp the game, but Iceman can win you very many matches. Yeah, wow, my brain froze there for a second. Ton, ton of uh, counterplay just by being a thing. Um, Korg, I think, is strong, but not quite top of the list. Uh, if you play this on turn one, the odds of your opponent drawing a rock by the end of the game are actually quite high, and rocks are often worthless. Uh, but as long as the destroy strategies with Nova are popular, Korg loses some value, because while you do um, make them waste a, um, a draw, um, if they have their Nova stuff already, uh, that rock can get boosted by Nova or can feed Carnage or even Venom if they have a Venom. Um, and <clears throat> it's not the deadest draw for an aggro deck that, um, it's still good disruption, but, uh, I've learned that aggro decks don't care about the rock very often. It's more often just, oh, that's annoying. I could have had a better one drop. Um, but oh well, and then they play the rock and either eat it with Carnage or boost it, and um, I've won games against, against Agro with it, but it's much stronger against Control, uh, so very format dependent. Uh, Nightcrawler, another very powerful one-drop. I think Nightcrawler should be a staple one-drop in most decks for uh, pretty much the, the life of the game, as long as movement abilities stay pretty rare. Nova is probably the strongest card in the game right now, as long as you're willing to play enablers for it. Um, if you play a minimum of two enablers for Nova, um, you're pretty consistent. If you play three enablers for Nova, um, as long as you draw Nova in the game, you're basically guaranteed to be able to turn Nova on. Um, and yeah, it's well, like I said before, it's game warping, war warping. I've already made a video about Nova. Uh, feel free to check that out. <clears throat> uh, I think Quicksilver is actually very powerful. If you want to play a combo deck, uh, that wants to play higher curve cards, uh, the fact you can guarantee hit a one drop and not be playing behind on curve is fantastic. Um, so <clears throat> it gets an honorable mention. I think um, Rocket's very strong, but I'm not going to name him as like uh, one of the strongest. Uh, I think Scarlet Witch is very strong, but once again, very specific deck type. Uh, Zero has very specific decks you want to put it in, but can be very powerful. Uh, same thing goes for like Ebony Ma. Uh, can be very, very powerful, but the drawback is big. <clears throat> um, sorry, let's move along. Um, Angela is one of the stronger two drops in the game. As you can see, she gets plus two power every time you play a unit here. So uh, let's assume worst case scenario is you just play the three units to her spot uh, after her. That means you're giving her plus six. That means she is a seven power for two. Keep in mind though Nightcrawler exists as well as some other movement effects. Um, Nightcrawler alone, you play Nightcrawler on her spot and move him later and you can get her an extra plus two power. So she's very strong in um, aggro decks. Um, you could even play her in some mid-range decks pretty reliably as long as your um, average curve isn't exceeding like three to four costs. You can pretty reliably get her fully powered up. Um, <clears throat> As I said before, uh, Okoye is uh, extremely powerful. She's kind of Nova, but for your deck. Uh, I don't think she's quite as strong as Nova, because Nova, drawing it on the fourth or fifth turn of the game, can still win you the game. Drawing Okoye on turn five or six, she does basically nothing for you, but she is very powerful and worth mentioning. Um, Forge is very, very powerful for combo decks. If you want to play a combo deck, I think Forge is incredible. Forge is not super powerful for uh, other decks, though. So make sure you're playing a deck that cares about that type of effect. Um, I will be breaking down a deck that does that um, pretty soon and posting that as well, though. Uh, da -da. Sorry, I actually didn't remember what Psylocke does because no one... No one I've played against has played it against me, except for like when a deck gives a uh, when a location gives us random cards in our decks. Uh, so yeah, she mana ramps, uh, lets you play a turn four, a turn early, or two two, uh, two drops. I'm sure there are some great combo decks for it. I could see it seeing her play in like a Jubilee deck, um, but I wouldn't like rank it like top end or anything. I actually don't like Beast does return your other cards. Oh yeah, I, I've seen this before. I uh, I think that there is a deck that can play Beast. Uh, but I don't think Beast is top end or anything. Um, I think Goose would have a specific thing. Carnage is, uh, is very powerful, um, in an aggro deck. It's obviously an important enabler for Nova, but 
Nova is what makes Carnage top tier, not Carnage itself. Carnage is a playable card, but not top tier. Um, I think Mr. Sinister is arguably actually very high tier, um, because <clears throat> if you play anything that boosts it, um, Okoye, Forge, um, hold on just a second, um, Nakia, uh, any of these, um, those effects are doubled by Mr. Sinister. I've won games by, like, surprise, I'm playing a 6-power Mr. Sinister and getting 12-power for 2 in a space. Um, so, you do need a deck around it, uh, uh, built around it, but it also fits into aggro decks really well. Uh, so, I think it gets to actually earn the title of a uh, top-tier card, because it can be played as a win condition, but it can also can just be played as a thing that... Um, fits on curve and gives you extra buff targets for things like Nova. Uh, armor is extremely high tier. As long as Nova is high tier, armor is high tier because this is one of the few counterplays to that archetype. Um, it, in addition to that, it can protect you if you have a specific strategy that you're trying to utilize uh, and can't afford to have something destroyed. Um, it can also be a free win if there's a, loca a location that destroys things when you play it there. You can wait to play armor until, like, the final round of the game, throw an armor there, and maybe in another unit, depending on what points look like, and almost always get a free location, because your opponent won't be playing something there, anticipating an armor. Um, multiple man is very powerful, but needs a specific de deck type, and um, isn't Nova powerful, where it's worth... Um, where it's worth it enough for it to be considered high tier. I think Strong Guy is actually very high tier, though. Um, this archetype really only demands that you don't play a lot of top-end um, cards. You can still get away with playing, like, a 6-drop in your deck, um, a 5-drop in your deck, and then you run, like, one or two cards that discard cards from your hand as a backup if you're playing expensive cards, or you just play cheap cards. And either of those options gives you a pretty safe Strong Guy play, and uh, his stats are so good because of it, it's very worth it. Uh, Swarm's very powerful in discard, but otherwise is just an average card, so it uh, doesn't get mentioned, really. Uh, I think Morph is insanely powerful, uh, but its power level varies based on what the, um, the format looks like. Um, if you are playing against a lot of decks with um, expensive big things, then Morph is much more valuable. If you're playing against a lot of things um, like in Nova format, where it's going to be things that destroy your units and Nova itself, then unless you're trying to cheese an extra Nova for a higher mana cost, uh, it has a lot less value. Um, but this is one of those cards that's extremely powerful, and its value slides up and down on the scale based on what the format looks like. Uh, Devil Dinosaur is one of the strongest cards in the game. It's one of the few things that can actually beat uh, Nova decks pretty reliably. Um, but of note, you must, 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 if you want to play Devil Dinosaur, play Moon Girl. Uh, it's just, it's so important to play both. And don't get me wrong, you can splash Devil Dinosaur into a deck if you just have a, th uh, um, a spot to fill on a three-drop curve and you're playing a very slow deck. But um, I strongly recommend Moon Girl if you're doing it. Uh, I think Mysterio is very powerful, but uh, I don't want to rate him because uh, I haven't seen enough of him play. <clears throat> I've seen Cerebro... Cerebro once, and this card's actually insane if you are playing a deck that uh, uses the same power level for everything. It boosts all of your stuff. Uh, so if you build a deck around it, this card is incredible, but it is not a every deck kind of card. Um, I think Rogue's very good, but not top tier. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I think the Brood is going to be uh, very powerful as well, for the same reason Mr. Sinister is, but I think it actually may end up being a little bit weaker than Mr. Sinister, because getting three slots filled uh, very early can be detrimental, uh, but I think, on average, it's still going to be a very powerful card. Um, I think Electro is a very powerful card for combo deck, uh, but we haven't seen enough combo decks right now, and I haven't had enough experience with this card to speak more on it, but I think it has a lot of potential. Um, Lockjaw, I forget what this does. When you play a card here, swap it with a card in your deck. Uh, once again, very powerful for a combo deck. Um, to be determined, but I expect this to be very powerful and go with like a Jubilee type deck. 
Um, Debris is pretty annoying, but not insanely powerful. Uh, Moon Girl's powerful, but Moon Girl's powerful because of... Um, actually, no. Moon Girl is one of the strongest cards in the game, let's be fair. Uh, she doesn't just enable double dinosaur. She can double your Novas. She can double um, <clears throat> other low-cost cards that are um, overstatted for what they do. I mean, heck, you can double a Bucky Barnes um, and a Carnage and then play two Bucky Barnes followed by a Carnage um, and get a ton of value that way, you know? Like, um, I think there's enough stuff you're happy to have. She doesn't fit into um, to top-end decks as well because um, duplicating your hand isn't as important for those kinds of things. Uh, you're not going to be able to play two six drops in most games you're playing. Um, but uh, she is valuable enough in enough deck archetypes and enables a powerful enough couple of cards that I think she herself deserves uh, the title of one of the strongest three drops in the game. Um, I did skip over not get which boosts your hand. Cool effect, uh, really strong with certain decks, but not guaranteed. Bishop's very strong for aggro, but um, on average I get him to around seven power, which is good for a three drop, but not like game breaking good. Uh, so honorable mention, but I still think like Boom Girl stronger. Cosmos a very strong uh, counterplay card, so it's one of the stronger three drops in the game for sure. Um, I actually think Vulture is one of the strongest three drops in the game if you're playing a move deck. Um, and once again, this is archetype dependent, but this is one of those cases where archetype dependent is uh, worth mentioning. Uh, while multiple man, you want to be able to buff multiple man for his like extra copies to matter, so I didn't really talk about him much. Vulture, if you hit a single Vulture and you move him twice, that's a 13 power Vulture uh, for three, and... Um, it's not hard to do, and heck, you can literally play him on turn four, where you go uh, Iron Fist, Vulture, and you've just played an eight drop uh, and a two drop and just got generated ten power for four mana. It's incredibly powerful, and um, I've I've played Vulture as late as turn four or five and still ended up having him with over ten power by the end of the game. So um, very, very worth um mentioning uh hulkbuster is also incredibly powerful uh, i think people are sleeping on this card actually not only does this enable certain cards like um like multiple man um where you're gonna give extra stats to it but uh of note you add four power to a space and you don't take a slot away which is very important because um it's really easy to have your spots cl overly cluttered in this game um not only from like aggro cards that just put a lot of units in play, but like locations can give you squirrels or they can give you ninjas with negative stats and stuff. And uh, uh, there are even cards that people aren't really using yet, but are an option that have negative stats that go onto your opponent's side of the board. And your opponent can give you one of those, which is taking away a slot from you and stats from you. And Hulkbuster, uh, being able to add four power and not take away a slot is very, very good. In addition to that, if you... um play this on a location that plays a duplicate copy of, um, on another location. Um, it will play a duplicate copy of whatever is merged with if it merged with something uh, with the increased stats. If you play this on a location that like, puts another copy in your hand, it will put a merge version in your hand. It does merge their costs, uh, which is worth noting, but um, you can get some really gross plays with it. So it, <laughs> And it's not the kind of thing that you have to play as a combo card. It can just be a 3-mana 4-drop that doesn't take a slot, which is very good in a lot of spots. I actually think aggro decks are going to eventually start playing Hulkbuster because they have an issue where uh, their board gets very cluttered very fast, and Hulkbuster is a way of adding power without um, that being a problem. Um, of note, there's one other 3-drop I need to talk about here. Uh, I think I scrolled right past it at some point. Do I have this filtered or anything? No, I don't have this filtered. Where the heck is it? I think I'm just expecting this to be in alphabetical order, and it's not. Yeah, I'm expecting alphabetical order is not alphabetical order. So I, I think I had already scrolled past it, and I didn't realize it. So sorry. Bear with me. There we go. Mr. Fantastic. Uh... Adjacent locations get plus two power. This is functionally a three mana, six power unit. Uh, it just splits it up across three spots. But um, the amount of times that you 
have a spot that you only need to put a little bit over because your opponent goes, oh, cool, they had 10 power here and they capped out their slots. I'll put 11 power here. Or there's a location that you can't play to um, or is risky to play to because it like destroys things or puts rocks in your decks. Mr. Fantastic is a great way of putting stats there. Um, very, very powerful, um, especially early in the game. You're going to see almost everyone playing Mr. Fantastic because it's one of the strongest three drops that you're given early. Uh, I think Jubilee is an insanely powerful four drop, but you need to be playing a deck that wants to combo for it. Uh, I think that deck would be clunky and have a lot of games where it can steal wins, and it will have some games where you feel really bad that you're running a really clunky deck. But because there are some cards that um, fix your curve, which I think I forgot to mention Domino, but uh, Domino is also a very powerful two drop for the same reason that Quicksilver is a powerful one drop. Uh, you are guaranteed to draw her. She's a two, three. You will uh, only ever draw her in turn two. Um, being able to, to use that in a deck that combos with something like Lockjaw, Jubilee, and then just expensive units is very, very good. Uh, but there's still a risk factor because you could have your Jubilee and your Lockjaw kind of buried in your deck and just hit your clunky expensive stuff. Um, so it just can't be the highest rating thing. Uh, I think Enchantress is one of, if not the best four drop in the game right now, because she counters so many popular strategies. Dino decks are really popular, at least on my end of the ladder. She can just be like, surprise, your dinosaur does nothing. Um, and some people will just go for like, uh, I win two locations with two dinosaurs, and you can steal one of those back with Enchantress and the other one back, which is a lot of stats. Uh, so very, very, very good. Um, I think Mr. Negative has a lot of potential as a combo piece, but uh, to be determined. Namor is a very strong 4-drop. Um, it alone can fully contest a space, 10 power in a space, especially if you can boost that space with like Mr. Fantastics. That kind of thing is very important. Um, there's one other 3-drop I totally forgot to mention. Um, Ironheart, um, especially at low levels of play, where everyone, almost everyone plays Ironheart at low levels of play. Uh, she's essentially six power as well uh, for three, except that you have to have at least three other units for her to generate that because she won't hit herself. Uh, but very powerful effect, especially if you're able to put it onto something that um, can increase its power incrementally uh, or can double itself or anything like that. Um, and it was worth mentioning her because... Things like Odin and stuff like that are great. She's also one of those th uh, effects that like Enchantress doesn't get rid of and um, is a way for you to steal a space kind of like Mr. Fantastic does. Um, boost your Namor's um, without taking away Namor's ability. Um, so that's very important. Um, Iron Man is obviously an insanely powerful 5-drop, but I think he's actually a little overhyped um, <coughs> because it almost feels like a win more card to me. Um, and there are cases where, like, he's amazing. If you're playing in a location that's like, oh, um, double the next uh, a card you play here, then it, it no longer feels like a win more card. It feels very, very powerful. But um, a lot of the time, um, I always, a lot of time when, I, when I'm playing around and I have Iron Man in my deck, I feel like I would have been happier with a different five drop that could have contested um, in a more meaningful way. For example, Claw. Uh, gives five power to the space to his right and contributes four power. So he's giving you nine power, um, and five of that goes to the right, which is like Mr. Fantastic only in one direction. Uh, once again, can boost like that Namor space. It can boost, um, <clears throat> it can boost the space that's already full of units, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I think Professor X is another card people are sleeping on. Um, I have a deck that I'll be featuring that's like a lockout deck, and it does things like with Mr. Professor X, Mr. Fantastic, uh, claw and like you can lock out with professor x be like oh man i actually lost that space by a couple of points and then steal the space back with a claw or a mr fantastic um <clears throat> and it's quite powerful um i haven't actually seen rescue if you play a card here next turn plus five power that's pretty powerful um but i don't know that i would mark it top tier um Cards in your hands cost one less. Uh, I can see a deck kind of comboing with this, but the problem with this card here is that you can't go lower than one. So you're essentially saying my turn six is going to be a bunch of like two drops or like three drops, or maybe you want to play two four drops. And right now there aren't a lot of four drops I perceive as like combo pieces. Uh, I think Captain Marvel is actually um, a deceptively powerful card. Um, because she can steal a win from your opponent, 
but you do need to be playing a specific deck type for that because if you don't have the space then she can't move obviously um <clears throat> I honestly wish Black Bolt was weaker and cheaper so that you could use this to disrupt things like um, Iron Fist more reliably. Um, turn 5, normally, Iron Fist already come down. It's pretty rare for people to save Iron Fist for turn 6. And uh, outside of that, I don't see it counterplaying very many things. Most combos um, that use low-cost units set them up before turn 6. It can maybe discard a dino from someone's hand, because sometimes you'll like to sleep on that till six, but um There's probably a, a place for it, but uh not the best thing in the world. Copy all cards your opponent played this turn, but on your side. I see I, I could see leader being a good counterplay card. Uh Teledu, play all cards, you discard from your hand or random locations. Oh, uh once again, archetype specific, but very powerful. Um I think Blue Marvel is very powerful, but because of the nature of how aggro decks are playing and using Nova instead, it's too clunky for your deck because you want to play things that you can just clear your hand with and uh, run Strong Guy instead. And that can just turn off Strong Guy. And um, yes, you'll get the stats worth out of it, but um, I don't know it's strictly worth it. Um, I think Odin is extremely powerful, but it's also very easy to play around if you anticipate it. I think, more notably, Heimdall is a really good scam card. Uh, not only is it very important for a move deck, but decks that don't use move strategies, uh, you can just surprise your opponent and steal spaces from them with Heimdall. Um, the first few times I lost to a Heimdall, I didn't even think to play around it and just got completely scammed out. Um, so that's that. my general list of, the, of what I think the best cards in the game are. Honorable mention to Thanos. I think there's going to be a really cool Thanos deck out there someday. Because um, the soul stones and uh, the, all, all the stones like do effects like draw cards from your deck plus something. Um, get extra energy, etc. And if you get all of the stones, um, then the power stone gives Thanos plus 10 power anywhere Thanos is at. And because you're drawing through your deck, you can pretty reliably hit everything. Uh, so I think there's there's a world where a Thanos deck is going to be very, very good, but I haven't been able to play with it enough to talk about it. So for now, that's it. Um, those are the universally best cards in the game, uh, not accounting for archetypes, um, because some cards that are archetype-specific are extremely powerful in the right deck. Um, Nova is pretty much the only card, though, that's archetype-specific that I think is important enough to build around, whether you're countering or adding it.